Hello and welcome to Back Tear Teardown Lab. I'm Andrew Armstrong and today we're talking about LED power supply. Now this power supply died on me. So I actually chopped off the wires and repassed them into this one. But this one is wrong because if you look closely, output 12 volts, output 30 volts to 45 volts. So yeah, that really didn't work well for me. I bought this because I saw a oh, high current output, but I neglected to really pay too much attention to the output voltage because I assume they're all the same, but they're not. Um, so yeah, this would have been really cool with a five amp because then it would probably not blow so easily. Anyway, what I thought I would do is let's just dismantle this because there's always the possibility that I can just fix it right now. And I have a whole load of these to do. So I've bought loads of that other kind. I don't even know if I can send them back. I can't remember where I bought them. Maybe they were eBay, maybe they were Amazon. Now the nice thing about this when uh, it arrived, it actually came pre-wired and the wires were soldered to the board. Uh, so you don't actually have to do any work, which is cool. So unfortunately I might have to re re-solder all those. But let's crack this bad boy open and see what secrets are inside. Spludger. Spludgers. Look at that. I was really struggling with that. One spludger for one second. Boom. Oh, it feels nice and toasty. It's still warm. So quick observation. Uh, yeah, looks good. Standard power supply stuff. See, there's the transformer there. So you've got that big gap separating high voltage and low voltage. This is all high voltage. That's low voltage. There is some conditioning. Looks like some, uh, is that some rectification? Does it have a half wave rectifier on it? Hmm, smells that way. I was really hoping though, like, like usual when you look at these things, you're really hoping to see something obviously bad, like a really bad uh, capacitor. But it seems like these uh, do operate a little bit uh, and then they flicker and then they'll just die after a while. So it really could be anything, one of these components failing. So I think I need, oh, hang on. Hello. This is interesting. My, uh, I kind of think, I thought I was, no, hang on. This is the mains coming in, but look at these diode configuration. That looks like rectification right there, doesn't it? There's something interesting happening. And then there is some regulation on board. I, I really got to learn how these things work. But you can see on the back here, it's because there's, normally a sense um, element on these circuits so that they can see uh, what current's being drawn so they adjust slightly so you can see there is rectification here but it's to generate a power supply for this uh, circuitry on the back which is uh, controlling the output so it's, it's got its own little uh, stuff going on regulation and things like that to operate and the idea being, as you have more, if you have more load on this side, then the power supply can react and make sure it's um, supplying the correct amount. Of course, because um, LEDs and the whatnot do need this. You see here, constant current. They do need to be adjusted for that. So I think the only thing I can do, looking at these capacitors, 680 microfarads, probably think about just changing capacitors and I'll probably think about changing this guy first because that's on the on the side which is actually controlling the output and as we know that the output is flickering yeah it could be just this um, starting to break down interesting enough though look at the leg on this diode it has a very dark dark um, uh, flux uh, imprint there so that's the sort of thing you see when things get hot but I don't know I suspect that was probably okay Still, let's whip some stuff out. Let's get this capacitor first. So, just checking where it is. It's those couple of legs here. So I've got some archery forceps on it. I'm not too bothered about damaging the capacitor, so I'm just pulling on it basically, and it's gone away like that. And we can check its value. I was just double checking, by the way, to see if its polarity is on the board because, uh, okay, otherwise we'd have to go and review the video. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is. 10 microfarads. Hopefully we have a little 10 microfarad in the box. 
And by box, I mean, of course, this old PC power supply, which I like to harvest things off. It's just having a little scan. There's a one microfarad. Um, there you are. I found a 10 hiding, that blue guy. Let's see if we can extract it without damaging it. So, again, arch archery forceps are on it, but I'm not locking them off, right? I'm not lo using the lock on the handle. I'm just literally using them as a very grippy grippy things. In fact, before I do that, let's try to figure out where this guy is. It's these two. In fact, I've got it. I've got it between my fingers. We might just try this. I think we've got this. I'm going to use my Hulk-like fingers to extract this one. Oh, just like that. Looking at the board, we need to make sure the polarity is correct. And looking at the nomenclature of the other components that dark area is negative and that could be standard I don't know if it's standard or not but I'm just going by the rest of this PCB so even if uh, the original designer was wrong in the f footprint it'll be fine so let's just hit that there and that's gonna be good to go really Bit of solder Ahas! Go on, comments down below on what happened there and why I let out a bit of an expletive. Might not have been totally clear. No worries, we get to enjoy soldering this again. Which is good. Sold the other leg. Which is good. A little trim, a flick of the wrist, he's off to the... Oh, nothing rhymes with wrist. Okay. Now, the other thing I need to do is to reattach these connections, which is pretty easy. I'll just show you how these uh, go in these blocks. They're quite nice, actually. You do have a cap that has built-in strain relief. And again, this is a brand new transformer. I think I ruined the box, too, so bum. We're going to have to experiment with this and use it in some other project. It's giving me 12 volts out, 5 volts, um, 5 amps. So what we can do, which would be cute, is to see how clean this power supply is. Because if it's a clean power supply, we might be able to use lighting LED power supplies for all of our amazing projects that require a good 12 volts out. Now, of course, if you're doing this live, as in up a ladder, on your uh, at the ceiling, please be careful and always, always turn off the power. And use an electrician screwdriver. I can't tell you how many times an electrician screwdriver with a little neon has saved my bacon, honestly. You'll think a circuit's totally turned off, you've unplugged the fuse, you've done all the, all the checks, and then you go... Uh, Go pop that thing on just as a you know last second thing and bang! Wow, there's power there that you never knew about. Definitely get hold of one. And they're only a few pounds. I'm just talking about the super simple ones. Don't bother with the electronic ones that beep and stuff. I mean, they're cute in their own way, but they always end up running out of battery or, or somehow failing. And when they fail sometimes, they fail in a way you can't trust them. So they'll... Uh, you don't know if it's a, a false positive or a false negative. So best off with the neons. And the nice thing with the neon is you can always test it by uh, yeah, hooking it onto a live just as part of your, your check. So when you're starting to work on a circuit and you haven't turned off any fuses or anything yet, just touch that neon on it and check it does go glow neon. It's always, uh, always sound right. So, similar thing that we did before, we need to clear the holes here so we can post them through. I mean, again, you know me normally in videos I don't post the, the leaded components, well sorry, the leads in through PCB holes because I'm kind of lazy with it and I always think that I'm not going to put massive amounts of strain on it, but this is a mains thing so you'll probably do an okay job if you can. Um, and that in course means that you may to make sure that really the holes are clean otherwise you're never in a million years going to post through look at the size of that watch there that really came out. 
And I probably should have paid more attention, which was live and neutral. Hmm. I'm guessing it doesn't matter. But you can pay more attention when you're doing it, of course. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. There's no ground uh, on this. There's no earth. There's no reference. Okay. So you've got the lead through now. I'm just going to try to tack one. Can't do it. Oh, one lead is still sticking through. That's fine. Get that guy in. We'll, we'll, we'll find the other one. I guess the moment of truth will be when we hook this up and we'll see whether or not it actually comes on. That's the first one. And the second, of course, is how long it stays on for. So I'm going to do the other end off, off camera. You, you, get the, you get the idea. We're looking pretty good here and it turns out there is the diagram on the box of the leads and we did match up. So it's all good in the hood. Final bit of messing around, getting it in the case. It's probably about right. Just pop the back on and go hang it up somewhere, see if it does anything. The light's connected and it is actually on. It came on, not flickering, anything like that. What I thought I'd do in the meantime is take the capacitor and put it up to this meter. You can get these anywhere. They're like a parts tester, parts identifier. Google them, you'll find them. And uh, I'm, I'm doing this in case one of you at home has an idea of what this indicates because it does say 10 microfarads, which is great. Um, not about the V loss so much. And then the equivalent series resistance of 1.6 ohms. Now, is that good? or bad for a 10 microfarad aluminium capacitor um, rated at 50 volts. I mean, if that is bad, then that would be great because you could identify the problem right away. But again, I'm not really so sure about that. Um, I suppose we could try with one of these. Let's try this other random capacitor that is definitely bulgy and rubbish. I know it's not a 10 microfarad as well, but uh, we'll go for it. Let's just pop that on. Let me get me lead back in. It managed to escape. I managed to find the thickest wire in the world, but again, it was salvaged from the same power supply, so it's a high current wire. Okay, so we're in. Testing. It's exciting, isn't it? Seems to be taking its time. Oh, it's taken an awfully long time. It definitely doesn't take this long, normally. Okay, but there we go. Maybe it took time to charge it up. So I'm just going to read what kind of capacitor this is. This is a 220 microfarad. Yes, 220 microfarad one. And it's coming out here as 28 microfarad. So that's definitely a dodgy capacitor. Equivalent series resistance, 0 0.15 kilo ohms. Again, that's much different, much lower than the other one we, we saw. And the V loss is 27%. So I don't know. I don't know if this is the source of our issues or not, but I'm going to leave the lights on for uh, a few hours and I'll, I'll report back. Was this the cause of the problems? I'm not really entirely sure. I mean, if you look, the light is absolutely working fine now. It wasn't even coming on before. So certainly something's changed and something's improved. Uh, it's been on now for several hours. There's been no problems with it whatsoever. I do wish I did have another capacitor of similar value though to check. Um, I did ask some friends online and I was assured that the capacitor should be within its um, okay range so who knows either way that's what I did and it's working right now